Aloha and welcome to the latest edition of Telehealth in Hawaii. I'm Vikramacharya. I'm the CEO of Cloudwell Health, Hawaii's only all physician founded telemedicine organization that's dedicated to providing care to all the residents in the state of Hawaii. We have an awesome show for you today. On our show is Greg Salas, former National Football League player and University of Hawaii alum. Greg, how you doing today? I'm good, Vic. Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you today uh, and, and uh, you know, having a good discussion and dialogue. Yeah. No, thanks for being on. To get things started, talk to me a little bit about your background, where you're from, um, what got you into sport, and we'll go from there. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 33 years old, born in 1988, but uh, I, I grew up in Southern California. Uh, you know, I, I played a lot of sports growing up and mostly, a, and a lot of it was because, you know, older brothers, I always wanted to do what my older brothers were doing. So um, shout out to those guys for kind of, uh, you know, playing sports and, and letting me get involved and play some tackle football in the backyard with them. <laughs> But I uh, just grew up playing football from a young age. And, uh, you know, I skateboarded. I played baseball. I did a lot of outdoor things because I, you know, had a lot of energy. So my parents liked to put me in organized sports. And uh, I was fortunate enough to receive uh, a few scholarship offers and chose the University of Hawaii. Um, uh, ultimately, probably the best decision of my life. Met my wife here. We have kids. Uh, things worked out. So uh, came over here in 2006 and uh, played for four years here. And. Uh, had a solid career and then ended up in the NFL getting get hearing my name called and uh yeah now now I'm post NFL career working for Learfield um you know representing the multimedia rights and corporate partner partnerships here at the University of Hawaii so back at my alma mater and uh yeah living life but that's kind of how I got started in sports and that's kind of you know just my general background that's very cool what was it like you know growing up training as an athlete you know obviously there's a lot of physical preparation, daily regimens. What was it like when you were um, practicing, getting on the field? What was it like? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I say back in my day, Jesus, that, that sounds weird to say, but, uh, <laughs> you know, at times have changed the, the, the sports culture and uh, I guess, you know, training regimen. And, and I think we'll talk about this, the mental aspects of, of sports. Uh, it's changed a lot where it, it's a lot more, uh, specified. It, it's, it's a lot more intense and, you know, people on their social media is involved now and there's a lot of other factors that get into it. You know, I, I, I pulled around some heavy weights and, uh, you know, ran with a, a little bit of a parachute on my back and that was speed training, you know, now there it's, you know, so much more science focused and they really dial into the things you can do. And, and even for these high school kids, man, they're, they're really, you know, doing cutting edge, top edge, um, you know, resistance and, and, you know, speed training. But yeah, that that was it. You know, you kind of just you, you had talent and and you you did things and you you practice and you try to learn from people ahead of you and and get blessed with some coaches that can and instill some knowledge in you. But uh, you know, preparing back then was was you know not the same as it is now. You know, I ran some cone drills and stuff in high school to get me prepared. But you know, as you progress and go up levels, you can see um, the different types of training you can do. So uh yeah I, 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 it, it's it's intense for sure to say the least you sounds like you played a lot of different sports growing up but you ended up going with football uh, what was it about football that uh was your pick i, I guess the natural selection I, you know football <laughs> chose me probably if i if i was better at another sport maybe I would have, <laughs> maybe i would have chose that one but uh no football just seemed natural and you know maybe because i was scared to get hit i ran away and dodged people really well <laughs> uh, yeah it, it just came natural I, I you know i think i had you know some speed and some natural talent and some you know some ability to catch the hands and judge ball hand eye coordination that just mm -hmm. ended up working out for me and you know, I ended up really enjoying and connecting with, you know, my family and my dad and my mother was, was a big football fan and my brothers over football on Sundays, right? We, you get to wake up and watch some football on Sundays and then our Pop Warner games were a little bit later in the day. So you wake up, watch some football, eat some breakfast, and then, you know, get off to your Pop Warner game. And that was kind of our weekends uh, back in the day. But uh, yeah, I, I have to say that that was just the, the sport I was most naturally gifted at, you know, for sure. Yeah. Now, when you're 
finishing high school, obviously you're a great athlete. You have a lot of options in terms of where to go to school. Well, what brought you to University of Hawaii? Well, I, I, I really didn't have that many options. <laughs> I had okay. a few, but uh, I got lucky later on. You know, I was a late developer. I was a late bloomer. Um, you know, I didn't really grow into my body and mature until, you know, at the end of my junior year. And I ended up growing about six inches over summer. You know, I had a really big, big growth spurt, you know, and then uh, my senior year, I was able to, to put some stuff together because you usually get noticed a little bit early on in your career, uh, you know, as a sophomore and junior. Uh, I didn't start as a sophomore. I didn't start as a freshman. I didn't start as a as a junior until halfway through the year. Um, so my senior year was kind of my coming out party and was fortunate enough to get on the radar uh, of the University of Hawaii um, kind of by force. I, we put we put a lot of highlight tapes out there and sent them to a lot of schools um, and had a lot of help with that from from family friends. So, um, yeah, I just fortunate to end up them offering me. And that was the first division one offer I got. So I already knew. You know, I already kind of had an affinity towards Hawaii, just the beauty, natural beauty had never been before. And then once they offered me, that was I was all in already at that point. Um, so, yeah, easy decision for me. Once you landed, you're like, this is where I want to be, huh? Yeah, you know, we <laughs> took a trip out there and uh, my parents came with me and, you know, we're all excited. This is my first, you know, college recruiting trip and the coaches pick you up and show you around and treat you nice um you get to see the campus and do all those fun things and you know I think I've always you know I loved surfing growing up I surfed in high school with my friends uh, back home you know Newport Beach Huntington Beach um so yeah once we got here I was like wow I can I can come you know my, my father was really adamant that I get out of Chino out of California out of Southern California and you know kind of explore other cultures and and get a you know a real college experience so uh, you know, he, he jokes around that he wanted me to go to a place where I couldn't just drive home. So uh, he shipped me off out, out, to, uh, out to the Pacific Ocean. And uh, no, things worked out. Uh, I really benefited from that and uh, grew up a lot in those years. When you're uh, in Division One, top tier program, playing on the football team, there's a lot of expectations, not only on the field, but also academically. Now, how were you able to balance all of that throughout your time at uh, UH? Yeah, well, I wish I did a better job, honestly. <laughs> I think that's why I ended up, uh, after my playing career, going to pursue my MBA because, you know, I really didn't, you know, it, it is a lot. You know, it, it is, you're called a student athlete, but really, you know, I was there majoring in football. I really was. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of time and, and dedicated to, to pursuing my dreams there. Um, I was still, I still graduated and, and did, you know, I wouldn't, I would say almost, I almost did the bare minimum, which I always caution players against because you have a real finite time to, to really maximize this opportunity. It's a grind, but it's the, it's the funnest part and, and the part you'll look back on and never regret. Um, but yeah, you, you just got to focus. It's a lot of focus. Um, you know, the football part kind of takes care of itself when you're doing the right things. But obviously, you still have to be eligible and take care of uh, everything in the classroom to make sure you're able to play on Saturdays. And, and, you know, I try to tell when I come back and talk to players, high school players, college players right now, um, I tell them to focus, especially in, in the classroom, you know, take the time right now. You're here for four years already, here four to five years. Take the time, really focus on a degree that you, you're going to be interested in once you're done with college because you don't want to graduate and, you know, end up realizing you wanted to focus in something else. So. Uh, and majority of them are not going to make it to the next level. Very fortunate to, that it, it worked out for me. But uh, majority of players, you know, the one percent of the one percent that gets to college, the one percent of the one percent are going to make it to the NFL or whatever you know professional sport they're going to make it in. So I always have a heavy emphasis on on education because I see the value and and what it can do for someone post athletics because it's going to be. And I'm sure we'll talk about this again. Uh, the mental part, but you go from this is your identity. You're an athlete. Uh, everyone wants to talk to you because you, you're a football player uh, that ends, you know, for a lot of people at the end of college, that's it. You know, you can't play organ. You can't play football anymore. That's for sure. You can play pickleball, uh, you know, some basketball, you can play golf, you can do all these other things, but um, football ends, especially um, organized football, tackle football. When that's done, it's done. Um, and, and it takes a transition period to, to get acclimated to that. You know, you, you mentioned the, the importance of mental health. And it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mental health is a, is a very significant subject right now in terms of people getting access to, to the care they need. Um, when you were training, when you were in college at UH as well as in the pros, uh, 
how much emphasis was there on mental health compared to to now when you talk to when you talk to athletes? Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't say there was a real focus on it at all. Uh, when I was, you know, going through high school, college, um, once I got to the NFL towards the end. So I entered the NFL in 2011. And I'd say around 2015, 2016, you can really see, um, obviously, sports science starts playing a huge role in, you know, making sure the body is maximized, but also mentally, um, where we actually have um, a team psychologist uh, there for you. Um, especially when you're on the East Coast, if anybody on the East Coast is, you know, you come from, especially for me, I came from Hawaii, from California, where, you know, it can be sunny, you know, 90% of the time, but you go to the East Coast and you're now in New York, Philadelphia, Foxborough, um, you know, these places, uh, you know, it can be dark out up until, you know, 9 a.m. And then it's dark by 4 p.m., you know, 3.30 mm -hmm. p.m., especially on some of those bad winter days. Um, so they kind of know the effects of, you know, sunlight and they start to do those things. But, um, you know, that can really drain on somebody, not just that, but also the pressures of football. But, you know, be mentally sharp. You take all this time to prepare your body. You got to make sure you take the, the same amount of time, if not, if not more, to make sure your mind is right. Are there um, any coaches in particular that were really good about saying, look, you know, we want to make sure you're just as as focused and good physically as you are mentally when you were in the pros? Yeah, I think all the coaches, you know, understood for the most part. And, and that's where the team, you know, the whole setup of an organization comes into play, right? Because, you know, it can, it can be head coach driven. It can be, you know, organizationally driven from, from owners. Um, so, yeah, like I said, you can kind of see that trend. I'm sure everybody has a sports psychologist on, on in every organization now because <laughs> of, of the importance of it. Now, I think, I think it was just a, an under underappreciated segment that, you know, was underrepresented in, 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 in uh, professional sports and even college sports. Um, you can just see the difference even now here at the University of Hawaii. You know, when I played here, there was less emphasis on it, but now there is more emphasis where there's safe spaces to talk. You can go um, talk to counselors at any time. So they want to make sure that you take part, air yourself mentally. And, and uh, especially professional sports, so much of the game is won in preparation and uh in film study and and you know you using your your mental capacity um more so than your physical capacity because you got to make sure you can recover during the week to to perform again um the following weekend so um the mental aspect of it is huge i say in professional sports that's kind of the biggest difference is you know how you're able to adapt mentally uh, more so than physically yeah let's talk through that a little bit during the week um what types of mental exercises or mental health related activities are being done by by professional football players because a lot of the a lot of the week is is a lot of like you said it's a lot of mental it's a lot of film study it's a lot of preparation which is not physical but it's more more mental right yeah well i guess it really depends on the individual right if we're really talking about if we're talking about preparing and and kind of what are your habits your good habits or for preparing for an opponent that week um that's that's a completely separate issue i'd say from if someone's struggling mentally um or, you know, whatever the case may be that, you know, people are going through all different types of things. No one really knows what's going on um, in each individual's life, right? They can have family issues. They can, you know, be struggling to make the correct financial decisions. They can have relationship issues. Uh, it could be a number of things. And, and if that, if you're not taking care of those things and getting the help you need for that, to, then, then, you know, it's not going to take care of itself on the field. You're going to, you're going to struggle on that aspect more than likely. Um, so I know now there's there's more emphasis, there's more opportunity for for players to speak to people. I, I haven't I've been I've been retired now for for about five, six years. So um, I, I can't really speak to the opportunities that are that because I just don't have any firsthand knowledge anymore. But like I said, towards the end of my playing career, you can they had a sports psychologist there 24 seven for you to, to speak to. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know. If when you're mentoring younger athletes or people who say, you know, I want to play in the NFL, I want to play at UH, what types of uh, mental advice do you give them to keep, to keep persevering around resilience, around mental health? What, what, what advice do you give? Hmm. It, you know, it, it's different. You, know, you can see the way people are on certain paths um, and, and, you know, without knowing too much, you know, sometimes it's very, surface when I'm speaking to people without really getting 
into you know what what can really be causing them to tick or why they're making certain decisions right you, you're just kind of talking to to people in general but you know the people that i have had an opportunity you know you just try to find out a little bit more about what's going on in their life more personal mm-hmm. stuff um you know their upbringing you know the, their circumstances now so you can get a better feel for for who they are and 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 how they're coping with things um and, and you just want to make sure that they're taking care of themselves right yeah i think you always got to take care of yourself first and foremost um just sort of like on an airplane right you gotta you gotta put your own mask on first before you can put it on anybody else and help anybody else right you gotta you gotta do the 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 mental gymnastics there to to make sure that you're you're operating at you know full capacity um but i, I just always offer encouragement right there's always going to be setbacks and, and failures and those are always opportunities i always tell them you know failures and setbacks are always opportunities i, I can't imagine uh, anybody in life going through it where, where everything is just success, right? It's never going to be instant. You're going to have to put in the work. And, and it's like, you know, I always referred to it as you're, you're making, you know, deposits in the bank, mm-hmm. everything you're doing now that it's all adding up and then it'll pay off in the end, you know, it's an investment in yourself. So, um, th- those are kind of like some of the, the surface and part uh, stuff I try to, you know, push on to other folks when I'm talking to them, you know, in, in, in group settings. Is there um, a moment in particular you you'd like to share where uh, maybe something happened in a game, or you know there was a setback during the game, personally or on the team side, that you know resilience and perseverance really paid off long long term? Oh yeah, I mean it's it's so apparent, and everybody has their own um, you know slogan for this but for us it was always one snap and clear right it's it's you can't mm-hmm. you can't worry about things that have taken place already you got to learn from it and you got to move on and be prepared for the next moment because you have a whole game to play still right you can i could have dropped the ball uh on a on a big down you know early on in the game but i know look at the next opportunity i get or the next play i get the next assignment i have um, i'm going to make the most of it you got to have a short memory and i think a lot of that holds true um in everyday life, right? You got to mm-hmm. learn from from mistakes you've made. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, you got to learn how to laugh things off and find humor and everything, and and uh, and move on and and use that. You know, use it as motivation. And I, I think some people do that better than others. That's always something I think I've done well is is use setbacks as motivation. Um, it, it, but everyone's different. Uh, but those are some of the things that, that we always talked about, the one snap and clear mentality where, you know, you can have a really, you're ever you're never going to be at the top of the top and you're never going to be at the low of the lows. You got to try to stay even keel. And, and I think that's important in the game of football, but also in the game of life. Yeah. You know, there's a lot that's been coming out, especially over the past 10 years around the, the, the safety of the game. Um, looking after players, like I said, after their, um, no longer in the NFL. You know, what are your thoughts on player safety after they leave the NFL? Are people being well taken care of? Um, is the league appropriately providing? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you, you know what? I think the NFL does offer a lot of assistance um, mm-hmm. for players. But the, the thing is, is, you have to want, and I think this is something that a lot of people struggling struggle with, is admitting that something can be wrong or wanting to seek help. I think that's that's an issue um, that can can be destigmatized. Um, that you know you don't have to white knuckle it and be strong because you're a big strong football player. It's okay for things not to be going all right. Um, and, and the NFL does have a lot of whether it's information packets, hotlines. I mean, you're on this huge mailing list. I get things every day. It seems like for mm-hmm. webinar series or helping recruitment for for you know players transitioning, um, educational benefits if you play enough years and and get vested in the league, right? Um, hotlines, you name it. There's there's an emphasis on it, and I know they speak about it at the, at the games and in the facilities. Um, but yeah, there's there's help, but I think they need to. People need to. Um, I think they need a. It's the diff, most difficult part is asking for the help and going and, and receiving it, right? People are afraid of that bad news or what they might hear or what they might let out of the, their mouth, right? So um, I think that can be done uh, culturally a better job of destigmatizing that. And, and I think it is. I think enough people are talking about it. It seems every day you hear um, a celebrity and athletes say they struggle with mental health. It's okay to seek help. It's okay to not be okay. Um, 
what's not okay is to is to hold it all in and and not seek help. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Greg. You know that that relates to to everyone, not just uh, professional football players. If you feel something, um, you ha- you should seek help. You yeah. should seek counsel. It- yeah. And Vic, and likewise, I'd be remiss to like remind people that, you know, the top CEOs, they all have mental coaches, right? I mean, any, any success, a lot of successful people, even if you don't have issues, it's okay to still talk to somebody and, you know, whatever it is about, right? To a third party that really is no judgments, no, no motive, um, just someone to talk to and figure out issues and peel back layers. Um, learn how to attack problems in a, in a different light, maybe just a different perspective. Um, everybody does it, even people who aren't struggling. And I think it's a very important part for people to understand that even the most successful people in the world have a mental coach or, or some somebody that they can can talk to and confide in. That's a really great point. You know, Greg, you, you made the transition from professional football to now your current job. And what was that transition like for you? Was it um, different because, you know, you're training as an athlete all the time and now you're, you're working. Um, how, how was that for you when, when, once that was done? You know, I think, I think it, I always kept in the back of my mind that, that you're going to transition at some point. And mm-hmm. I think it was always in the back of my mind to be financially stable, financially ready. Um, Cause you hear about the horror stories or, you know, people mismanaging things or just not having, you know, enough oversight of an ownership of what's going on in their life and leaving things to other people to handle. Um, so I, I'd always kind of had that in the back of my mind and I kind of, and in the NFL, it's, they say it, it stands for not for long, not national football league, but not for long because the average career is, is two years, two and a half years, give or take. Um, so once I kind of saw the writing on the wall where, you know, I've had a lot of injuries, I've been in the NFL for six years, you know, that's, that this can be it. Um, I immediately went towards education because uh, I utilize the NFL every off season, basically, whether it was a personal financial wellness class and like the Wharton School of Business or Miami School of Business. Um, I always kind of utilize those to kind of expand my knowledge outside of football and and pursue other things that I knew eventually I would be passionate about. Um, so that's what I did. As soon as this was done, I, I you know, the NFL has a great program. Um, they offer financial um, aid, you know, so not mm-hmm. only can I go get an MBA, I can also get my MBA paid for as long as I'm maintaining mm-hmm. a certain GPA. So I took full advantage of that. And now I, I'm sitting here four years later out of the NFL, five years later, um, with an MBA, um, mm-hmm. a nice career path that I'm, I'm, I'm on and, and enjoying life with my family and not really worried about the things, um, that come with the transition, but um, I know it's difficult for a lot of people. It was it was difficult for me, you know. I, I don't think I let it hit me until a few years out, where I'm thinking like, oh wow, football is actually over now. Um, I kind of missed this. I'm watching it on Sundays now. I'm not participating. I started fantasy football league for the first time <laughs> uh, last year, uh, but now I've really enjoyed to to love the game and watch it, um, you know, and and enjoy just watching good football. Yeah, I mean, you're you're trajectory through you know athletics and now professionally as it relates to mental health it sounds like it's so much around mindset you know just perseverance optimism reach out for help if you need it use the resources that you may have um, at your fingertips to really make sure that you're in the right space as you ascend through different phases of your life yeah um yeah i think perspective is a big a big deal on it right and and i'm fortunate to have a good team and a you know a great wife and kids now and parents um and siblings so you know i know it's different for everybody's circumstance but um you know there's hotlines there's there's things available right that are toll free whether it's you know i know not everybody has the same set of resources and circumstances so um i just think it's important to know what's available to you and and you know you gotta kind of you got to want it, right? You got to want to seek the help and, and feel better. And, and like you say, you're never at the highest of highs and you're never at the lowest of lows. So um, like you said, mindset is, is, is key. Yeah. And especially for athletes, you have to pay attention to both the physical and the mental. And a lot of times it's, you have to have the mental to do the physical. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that people make a living because their mental is so is so good in the NFL too, or or in any professional mm -hmm. football, right? You know, the more you know, the more knowledge you have, um, the more valuable you become to an organization. So, um, you know, it's not always the most physically gifted guy who ends up making it, right? There's 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 also a mental aspect of it, and then for athletes, you know, they need to understand that a lot of it is transferable skills. Um, the things you learn, the grit, the determination, the hard work you're doing all that. And then now it's just trying to try to focus it in another, another aspect. Yeah. Greg, it's, it's just a really awesome to have you on the show. I mean, uh, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Yeah. Your ability to articulate mental health is just been phenomenal because, you know, when you think of professional sports and football, you think of the athleticism, the physical athleticism that, that people see, but this was a really great conversation on just life, but also mental health. And that's, that's the most important topic these days and something that everybody has to keep in mind. No, for sure. Uh, it's important. Um, you know, and like I said, you see, you see people talking about it a lot more now. Um, a lot of big celebrities, a lot of, you know, people uh, that, you know, regular folks, you know, look up to people who look, I mean, I look up to, to these people too. Right. Um, uh, and, and it's important and I'm glad that people are talking about it more um, because that's, I think that's the biggest thing is, is opening up and having the conversation, right? Not being, you know, holding it in and keeping things closed, but being able to discuss things. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time, you know, and yeah. um, it's, it's just great to have a conversation around something that um, especially athletes sometimes struggle with, you know, feelings, mental health. and especially now it's very important to have this conversation. I'm glad we're doing so. And I really appreciate your time and thanks for being on the show. Yeah, no problem, Vic. Anytime. Appreciate you having me on. You take care. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.